What's that you're holding in your hand, Mike, I hear you say? It's the future of video games. Probably. This is the Oculus Rift, a kick-started, affordable virtual reality headset, and it's amazing. It's amazing mainly because it's a home virtual reality system that genuinely actually works, but also partly because it's taken so long to get here. Virtual reality has existed for decades, but it's always been terrible. The technology has been based on pressing two screens as close to your eyeballs as possible, with nausea-inducing lag on the head tracking. The prototype Rift that Palmer Lucky built in his parents' garage was all based on existing technology you'd find on your smartphone, a lightweight HD screen and accelerometers that know when the device is tilted and rotated. He just put it all together. So how does it actually work? Well, uh, you have a 720p screen in uh, this section of the headset and then a pair of lenses that allow the vision to be sort of distorted so that you have a consistent 3D image surrounding you. So it's essentially like you're there. It's not like a, a 3D movie where there's a screen and then it comes out at you. It is literally all around you and it absolutely stands up to any sort of viewing angle and things like that. Not only that, but it's got accelerometers and I think a compass in it as well that ensure that you can look around and there's absolutely no lag at all. It's completely seamless. As you move your head up, you can see the ceiling and as you look down, you can see the fact that you've got no legs because most games don't do legs. It's really lightweight, a lot lighter than uh, I thought it would be. And it connects via USB, which is a, obviously a universal uh, format and HDMI, which is the standard for next-gen consoles. It doesn't actually have any audio, but that's because the developers figured that you probably want to use your own favorite headset. If you like surround sound headsets, maybe you'll use that. If you just prefer stereo headphones, that's fine as well. And it also keeps the weight down. We can't actually show you what it looks like on a YouTube video. So for your viewing entertainment, here are two actual human beings trying it for the very first time. Okay, cool, I'm gonna put it on. Oh man. Go. Oh, cool. This building's huge. I take it all back. Oh, you really get a sense of the scale. This is incredible. Drone looking at me. <laughs> get out of it. Oh no, look all the way down there. I've got vertigo. This is eerie. This is rad. <laughs> oh my, that train's massive. Just unexpectedly effective. Everyone should be able to try these. <laughs> Gives you a much better sense of the scale of everything. It is so hard to convey just how cool this is. It's weird, you expect, you expect to see your arm come up when you move it around. And there's no, I mean, there couldn't be lag. If there was lag between your head moving and, and the image in the game, well, you'd probably feel terrible, but also it just wouldn't work. So weird. It's not like moving a mouse around. It's just like it's like actually being there. Thanks for walking me into a pole. Also, <laughs> just about any first-person game looks spectacular, and that's not just shooters. That's stuff like Minecraft as well. Oh my god, that is so. Oh god, I'm trying to breathe. I feel like I can't breathe. Oh my. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Crucially, Epic has integrated support into Unreal Engine 4, and if the next generation's anything like this generation, then Unreal will be the de facto engine for most developers. When we played with the device at E3, it was running a version of the Unreal 4 Elemental demo, which Epic used to show what next-gen games could look like. We were able to wander around a snowy castle and marvel at graphics that would have looked impressive on a screen. The difference is, we were inside that world. It's not perfect though. There are still some areas that need work and some problems yet to be solved. One of those problems with the first version is close to being solved. That's the resolution of the screen. 720p might be fine in the context of your HDTV, but just try pressing your nose up against the screen. Go on, we'll wait. You can see the gaps between the pixels, right? That creates what's described as the screen door effect, as if you're looking at the world through a fine mesh. Yeah. I feel like I'm walking around in like a beekeeper's outfit. At E3, the team at Oculus debuted a 1080p prototype, and the difference was considerable. We reckon it'd be good enough just like that, but based on what they told us, they're exploring even higher resolution screens. Clearly, their ultimate goal is retina-style screens like the iPad, so you won't even realize there are pixels at all. The other problem is more tricky. Because most first-person games involve walking around and most living rooms aren't the size of the whole world, there's a mismatch between the fact you are sitting down and your character is moving. 
It's slightly disconcerting when you're moving forward, but extremely strange if you try and turn your character. As it happens, there's another Kickstarter working on a system that will allow you to run on a sort of omnidirectional treadmill to simulate movement. It's actually currently using Kinect to detect the movement and has its own developmental hurdles to overcome, but it's a potential answer to the problem. I may be biased, but I think one of the best applications could be driving games. Yes, yes, I know. I may spend 87% of my time on this earth talking about racing games, but actually in this case I've got a point, I promise. For a start, racing games are a situation where you are both moving, but also sitting down, which eliminates the walking problem. There's also a cockpit surrounding you which grounds you in the world, and the scenery rushes past outside of that cockpit. Also, racing cars are totally awesome. So enough teasing, what are the chances of it actually coming to Xbox One? The problem isn't the technology, the Rift is based on USB and HDMI so it could work with the Xbox One. The problem is whether Microsoft will grant Oculus a license to create a version that works with the console. For the same reason you can't just plug any old PC controller into your 360, the Rift won't work out of the box. We're still hopeful though, not least because the Rift would integrate beautifully with Kinect 2.0, allowing the console to know not just where you were looking, but whether you were leaning, turning, crouching or even mimicking a running motion. Combine that with traditional Kinect gameplay and you could have something enormously immersive. Unfortunately for us, Microsoft has traditionally kept a tighter leash on this stuff than Sony. But if it takes off on PC, and it looks like it will, you don't want to be the one console at the next gen party that doesn't have it, do you? So what do you reckon? Would you pick up an Oculus Rift as an accessory to your Xbox One? What kind of games would you like to play on it? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more Xbox One coverage here on Outside Xbox. See you next time. I'm just stroking the wall, it's like being on MDMA or something. <laughs> this is Quite. brilliant. Put it okay. in the box. <laughs>